There are few nations in Europa Universalis IV that can say that they are the ultimate playing toll master, but one of them of course is going to be Holland, which later becomes the Netherlands, with flavor added in previous patches that still stands the test of time. Holland has remained one of the best playing toll nations by far, and we're going to be illustrating that today, where we're going to be staying small and will be becoming one of the most powerful, strongest economies in the game, surpassing economically even the Austrians and the French despite having less than a quarter of the size of those particular nations and even militarily will be growing to significant sizes if we get 6,000 likes on today's video I'm gonna do a brand new England run and if we get 6,900 likes in the first few days after this is out we will continue our Dutch saga also guys I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and happy holidays hope you all spending your time with your family and I wish you an amazing year to come afterwards with lots of happiness and health and hey if you enjoy the content consider subscribing I'm trying to reach 190,000 by the end of the year but I kind of just gave up on it since it's 4,000 left in like two weeks yep that's not happening is it the county of Holland has its origins deeply rooted in the initial conquests of the Franks after the Frankish Empire dissipated and became eventually France Lotharingia and Germany or the Holy Roman Empire better yet and the feudal system was deeply entrenched within European society. The county of Holland became one of the richest counties within the Holy Roman Empire. Eventually it fell under the uh, house of the Burgundians and then once the Burgundians became Habsburgs it became a part of the Austrian Habsburgs Netherland and then later the Spanish Habsburgs Netherland or just Spanish Netherland really. That being said Holland was definitely the leader of the rebellion against the uh, Spanish and of course had a principal role in the creation of the Dutch Republic later being known as the Netherlands. Today we are in 1444, a junior partner of Burgundy, but don't let that fool you. It's going to be extremely easy to become independent. A lot of people have said, especially in my uh, previous Holland videos, why don't you stay a part of the Burgundian crown because you have a 555 leader so you get a lot of admin points that you can develop. That is a very small PP mentality right there because you being a part of the Burgundian crown means two things. First off, you cannot expand and you want to be expanded expanding early on so you give time for your aggressive expansion to go down and then you expand again and you let the expansion then you let the aggressive expansion go down again and you expand again so this way before 1500 you have the entirety of the Netherlands and all you need to do is just continue to develop your provinces and continue to just play toll and maybe establish a colonial empire or a trade empire at the same time if you stay a part of the Burgundian crown very likely you're gonna end up either integrated when they have the Burgundian inheritance and you going to fail the game or you're going to have to fight the Austrians when they get Burgundy or the French or somebody of the sorts. It's going to be significantly harder to get your independence as you progress in the game. And not only that, but the lack of your own expansion quite literally means you're cucking yourself from having a proper development. So don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Be a better EU4 player. Stop with these small peepee -pee comments, guys. Come on. Just think for a second here. Anyway, the rant is over. Now that the rant is over, we're going to see who is going to be supporting our independence. We have Castile, France, and likely Austria. A lot of the times the English support our independence, but apparently not today. That is a okay though. The French supporting our independence with the um, Castilians and the Austrians is actually more than enough. Reality is that if you get three nations to support your independence, chances are about 70% Burgundy is just going to give you the independence. You don't have to fight the independence war. So that's one way. But I kind of want to fight the independence war because that's easy. France, Austria, Castile, England or whoever fights me is going to do all the heavy lifting and in exchange I also will be able to get two or three provinces from Brabant or from uh, Flanders which means I expanded without having to fight the Burgundians myself. I let my allies do the work for me. So that's why I kind of want to fight the independence war. That's why I'm probably only going to get two nations to support my independence. Let's see. Before that happens though we're going to be yet uh, setting up our estates first and foremost. Going to give out the plus one mana privilege for all three of the estates. This way we uh, get uh, extra mana points monthly as consequence, summon the diet, go for whichever agenda best suits you, and then of course seize crownlands of, as well. Patronage of the arts for the extra prestige is really good where we're gonna wait with this until we actually gain our independence. The minus 15 advisor cost reduction is good, you want to give that out after you have one stability which should be easy to get since uh, your starting mana points which is based off of your starting mana generation is above 100 so you can get one stability from the start, but we're not getting our uh, advisors just yet, not all 
of them because we cannot afford all of them. So we're not going to give out this privilege until we actually gave out the advisors. We will be giving out private trade fleets, however, and allow burger economic freedom for the extra merchant flat trade power and provincial trade power modifier. This is a really good privilege that was added, I think, with the last last DLC. I'm not sure, but it's just amazing to have. Burger financial demand is really good too, as is the promote burger bookkeeping. But we don't want to get this just yet. This is going to be in the future. We're going to keep the last two slots for something else that we're going to add as we go along in the campaign. Religious diplomats is really awesome. You get the extra diplo relations with Catholics and the diplo reputation plus one. Clerical education gives extra reform progress, which is always going to be welcomed, of course. For the nobility, the increased levies offers more manpower, something that you're going to be struggling in the initial part of the campaign. So you definitely want to take advantage of this, especially since we start with 47% of our crown lands uh, pertaining to the nobility. This is the amount that you get here is based off of the amount of crownless that the nobility has. We're also giving supremacy over the crown so we get the extra loyalty equilibrium with our estates. As you can see, we don't yet have 50% with the clergy, so we're going to need to give out one more privilege as consequence. We're also going to give grand court positions for the uh, nobility, and that's it. I also have to mention that uh, when you conquer lands from uh, the Brabant and the Independence War, if you have less influence for your estates, you get more crownlands. So, if you really want to min-max, you probably want to wait you want to only give the plus one mana privilege and that's it the rest of the privileges you can give after the initial independence war okay so because we increased our diplo reputation and relations because of the privilege we gave out for the uh, clergy the austrians are going to support us now we're going to go for austria and we're going to go for france with the support we don't really care about the castilians as much i think austria and france is more than enough to handle burgundy we're also going to bring our units over to amsterdam and we're going to be recruiting one of the free companies here let's go we're gonna recruit him in Amsterdam as well it's gonna go a little bit over our land force limit but our land force limit is going to increase once we've become independent so that means once we've declared our independence war that being said we also need to do something really vital here namely set the vital interests around these areas because if we don't do this and say the Austrians or the French or the English take these provinces it's likely that they will keep them as under their control and then we cannot take them in the war doesn't always happen but it can happen it's happened in previous runs I, I hate for that to happen honestly personally none of them have strategic interest in there well the Austrians actually do have uh, strategic interest in there because it's likely we're gonna have to just hide in this province for a while until uh, we're able to sally out and start conquering stuff for ourselves we're gonna rely on the um, French and the Austrians so we're gonna need to wait for a few months until their armies arrive towards our borders and their armies are able to reinforce us whenever the need arises right we do have a lot of light ships and we're gonna be sending them over to the English Channel which is essentially our main node we're not doing that just yet we want to fight our independence war first so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna recruit a few more uh, galleys light ships better yet not galleys it's gonna take a while for these two to get recruited but we don't have much uh, to do anyway because we're not gonna be using our fleets whilst at war otherwise we have to fight Flanders and Brabant and together they have and Burgundy too so they have a bigger fleet than us they would of course wipe out our own fleet we don't want to lose our ships just yet if if the English supported our independence, then we would sally out with the fleets because then the English would help us out with their particular fleet. So if in your games, the English uh, support your independence, make use of them and um, merge your fleets with their fleets in combat. It will be a little bit of an overkill to get the Castilians too, but if I get them now, wait for one day, the Burgundians will not uh, grant me independence in just one day. And this way I can get all three of these major powers to fight for me. So let's go with the independence war. I could have probably done this a little bit uh, better I could have done it say 10 of December get the alliance with Castile and 11 declare on the Burgundians but it's fine anyway now we're gonna chill here for a while and we got an average leader 253 is not really amazing eh, it's fine anyway let's uh let's uh make him a general actually he's not too bad we'll keep him in there we'll wait for our allies to do all the heavy lifting and then we'll reap the benefits afterward now essentially we're just hiding underneath our bed whilst everybody else fights for us okay come on don't judge me okay this is how you're supposed to play the game <laughs> now we're also going to be setting the defensiveness edict in here so that should uh, make it a little bit harder for them to siege this down as you will probably notice they already started sieging our capital that's normal that's why we send our troops over there because if we didn't they would have wiped out our units and we don't want that to happen do we now actually i think i'm going to give the patronage of the arts now i i wanted to do something else but it's fine uh, okay boys oh snaps i forgot i should have gotten the stability after i did the war because i i lost one stability so i kind of wasted a little bit of mana points there it's fine remember that as well when you do your run okay get the one stat
tab increase after you declare the war. Oh, look at those French boyos there sieging down Burgundion for me. It can happen that the enemy is going to try and uh, attack your army from uh, the Frisian lands because there's this connection over here. If that happens, sally out your fleet to break uh, the progress of their units from uh, of moving from there to this province and then bring the fleet back in so you don't get your fleet actually destroyed, of course. I say that because the Burgundian army, this one, literally just tried to do so, but they cannot. Remember, in order to uh, cross a strait, you need to have either both sides of the strait owned by you or you need to have one side of the strait owned by you and the sea tile owned by you. So two out of three essentially required to cross a strait. Holy shit, the French are brave. Okay, okay, boys. We're gonna help out the Frenchies. Let's go. This is our fight. We did all the heavy lifting here. If it wasn't for our units, we would not be able to defeat this army, okay? This is a 100% a Dutch victory. The French were not even around. Truth be told, I don't even know if they fought in this battle. Did I even see French? So you, I, I, I didn't even see them in the fight. Not even a little bit. Oh, no. No. Stay away from me. Stay away. Get out of here. I don't want to see you. <laughs> Philip, stop chasing my 1,000 units. Go fight the French, man. They're literally sieging your capital. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Get your priorities straight. France, help me. Help me. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to actually give this objective to the uh, Castilians because they have an army close by. Where's the Castilian army? I know I saw it. Oh, it's not Castilians. It's uh, Foix. Okay. You siege this down. Come on. Help me out here, bro. I'm going to send some of my units to start the siege. Or who is this? Armagnac. Armagnac. I need you. Come on, Armagnac. Actually do something for once. Okay. Well, it looks like none of them give a schnapps about my orders. How about you, Austria? Can you please come help me siege this down? I beggeth of you. I beggeth, bro. Austria. I'm lit. It's right next to you, man. Can you just like, come on, man. Of course, they're going to siege Rizal, bro. I mean, at the very least, they are crushing Burgundy's army. So we have that going for us, right? It's not like they're completely useless as allies. I mean, truth is that, you know, I could do this all by myself, this independence war. I just gave them the privilege of uh, helping me out here. That's it. That's um, that's what's going on, truly. Oh, shit. What? No, I didn't even pay attention. No, I lost five of my ships. Literally just said a few seconds ago to bring these guys back and I forgot. This is clearly all Austria's fault. I blame them for everything. Well, since our fleet's smaller, we can get the Dutch trade fleet, which is our unique naval doctrine for the Dutch nations that increases our colonial range by 25 and ship trade power by 25%. So it's a little bit of uh, both worlds, right? Because the Dutch slash Netherlands are a really great colonial nation. So you can play tall and also have a massive colonial empire with just the provinces in Europe to support said colonial empire. Whoa, whoa, Austria actually going for one of the objectives I gave them? Hello? AI becoming of the smart? Cannot believe, yo. Oh my god. His real name is Chadikum Van, because that's how they do it in uh, in the Dutch lands, right? Van. It's not Von like the Germans. Van Dam. Clear, typical Dutch name. Chadikus Van Dam, the son of Jean-Claude Van Dam, in case you're wondering. Another very, very typical Dutch name. Jean Von Kladam. Von Kladam? No. Jean Wait, I forgot his name. What the fuck? I literally just said his name. What is wrong with... I literally forgot his... Jean-Claude Van... D Claude Van Damme. Okay, now I remember. We good, you boys. We good. Let's go uh, continue our expansion into Brabant here. Kind of weird. Like, his last name is technically Flemish, right? Van Damme. But his first name, Jean-Claude, is super freaking Valonian slash French. What's up with that? Is he French or is... He, I mean, is he Valonian or Flemish? I'm so confused there. Oh, they've sieged down Saluto. Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and get war reparations from them some moonies and wait we can pillage i don't want no that's it i don't want nothing else oh we need a diplomat back you come back bro Dariago. Arrivederci, saluto. And hey, that actually makes sense, me saying arrivederci, because that is, in fact, an Italian nation. Take note, after this war, likely all three of our allies are going to cancel the alliance with us. Well, actually, they're not rival to each other. We might be able to keep the Austrian one. Truth is that I really just want to keep the Austrian one. Maybe the French one too, but it's not necessary. The Austrian one, since they are the HRE Emperor, is going to make it easier for me to get relations with them and maybe, in the process, prevent them from asking from lawful territory whenever we do take lands from HRE provinces. And let's go back to one stability. The reason we want one stability is because we want to get the passive prosperity in our provinces and in order to get that you need to have minimum one stability and no devastation in 
in the entirety of that state. So we don't have any right now. And whenever we reach 100 prosperity, we get minus 10% dev cost reduction, goods produced plus 25% and autonomy reduction as well. So that's pretty decent. Let's change over to protect trade now. We don't need to worry about defending our province since Burgundy doesn't have an army anymore. Or now Burgundy doesn't have an army anymore, I guess. Yep. Arrivederci, boys. Okay, 99%. It's time to do the piss deal. Let's bring this guy back here. And we're going to go for, obviously, first thing we need to do is click grant independence. If we don't get this, we cannot take any lands. And then what we take from them is dependent on aggressive expansion because taking provinces gives us aggressive expansion. And remember, these provinces are a part of the Holy Roman Empire if we take them from Brabant. Plus, they are Germanic. So Germanic nations get more aggressive expansion with us. Nations in the HRE take more aggressive expansion with us. Catholic nations take more aggressive expansion with us. So it's like if they're not Germans, if they're not Catholics, if they're not in the HRE, nobody gives a shit. But because as they are everybody gives one now that being said these lands here are not a part of the hre so we would get no aggressive expansion for that so i guess it's a choice between getting all of flanders which has the city of bruges 18 development ghent and rizel bruges is actually pretty decent but antwerpen is where it's at boys this is a glass province which means we can spawn faceting in here and it's got 15 uh trade within the um the dutch node as well so i'm gonna do a little bit of a compromise i'm gonna take and Verpen and Bruges, both of them because they're really good for the trade bit and high development. And I'm going to take Ghent to connect my lands essentially so I don't have to worry about having a connection with all of my provinces. Now, this is going to be significantly more aggressive expansion. So this means that we're not going to be uh, expanding for quite some time after we take these provinces, which is fine. We're going to just take that period of time to uh, develop our provinces, fix our economy. We're also going to go for war reparations and all the money that we can take afterwards. Unfortunately, the money means that it's going to be split between all of my allies which includes Austria, France and Castile so I'm not getting much of it. So maybe actually I could instead cancel their their subject in Flanders maybe Brabant as well. If I cancel Brabant they will be independent but they will also be a part of the HRE right? Still better than having to fight. Yeah no it's fine. This is it. This is it right here. There you go boys. We got our independence and let's get our first rivals which are going to be Gelre, Utrecht and Friesland. Austria is not happy with us now. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's uh, gonna be a little bit of a problem there. And let's bring our units back. It is time to recover our economy, build up the ships that we lost, like Pepegas, because we shouldn't have kept our ships out, even though, you know. Also, we're gonna be improving relations with everybody, so we make sure that they do not join in a coalition against us. One more thing we can do about that is we can get alliances, and if they have above 50 aggressive expansion, we can get that alliance. So say with these guys here, get the alliance, then cancel the alliance, so they have a truce, which means for five years they cannot join a coalition, even if they wanted to. That's why I improve relations with some of the nations around. Munster is not bad because they're right next to us. Brunswick is not bad also, actually. Brunswick can be pretty strong sometimes. We're going to get them as an ally as well. And we're going to just improve relations with the rest of the nations around now. Having freed up Flanders is really great since uh, this is 11 development. They are not a part of the HRE yet. And they are surrounded by me and Burgundy. So once the truce is over, I will attack before Burgundy attacks because we have the same truce time. And I will essentially get Flanders without any sort of an issue. Now, we, even though we haven't yet uh, cored up everything, we have three ducats, so we can afford three advisors once we get the money for them. We also went to 11% crown ones. We probably could have gone to 15, 16% if we didn't give out all the privileges, which uh, in turn gave us all that extra influence. Oh no, man. The Austrians broke the alliance with us. That is just poo-poo right there. That's going to be an issue. So now nations are really joining in a coalition against us. Fingers crossed this doesn't trigger. We still have the Castilian and the French, so I don't think it's going to trigger, but I am improving relations with everybody around just in case I'm able to uh, dissipate said coalition, right? We need to get 50 relations on the plus in order to get these nations out of the coalition. Oh my god, look at that. Five ducats on the plus. Hot diggity dong. Imagine what that's going to be like after we've uh, properly consolidated our nation and we finish coring up all of these provinces too. All right, Brabant has been uh, fully cored, and by Brabant, I mean Antwerpen, which means we can make it a full state. Once we have the extra admin points, we can lower the autonomy so it goes down to uh, whatever that's going to be like 20% or something. You can also do this mission here, assert our sovereignty so we can get 100 military points which means we are going to be the first nation to get military tech 4 and as consequence we get 4 innovativeness as uh, we are the first to have reached that technology. Renaissance has also triggered in Monferrato and guys take notice the way that Renaissance spreads is highlighted over here if you want to pause the video and check but most importantly the main thing you want to take from that is that the provinces in Flanders as well as uh, Tuscany and the Venetian area get some 
extra bonus to uh, spreading renaissance alongside the other one other bonuses so check it out we're getting right now 0 0.80 per month in the flemish provinces and 0 0.93 that's significantly more than other non-flemish provinces so say for example this one here this one's only getting 0 0.05 because it has 10 development within europe uh, that it's a 10 development province in europe right but from 0 0.05 to 0 0.93 that is a massive difference it means that we're going to be adopting renaissance really fast so we can use that sell renaissance to other nations and get some money in return we also seem to be the first to be getting diplo tech four so we got another four innovativeness once we reach a hundred percent innovativeness and that's going to be fairly quick as the dutch we will have minus 10 of every power cost reduction so that means that developing provinces is going to be 10 percent cheaper as well alongside every other interaction that requires mana points is going to be 10 percent cheaper i also got an inflation reduction advisor along alongside a uh, trade efficiency advisor because after having these two advisors recruited within i think 10 or 20 years there's a chance that we get a special event that gives us 200 admin and 200 diplo the only requirement for that is to have these two advisors hired at the same time and then it's just rng how fast you get that particular event but getting it earlier in the campaign obviously is going to have a bigger impact since earlier in the campaign it's a lot harder to get mana points compared to the mid and late part also check it out nassau is now at 50 plus relations so they are actually okay with us getting an alliance they're still in the coalition against us why is that well because we need to reset their relations with us the easiest way to do it is either reload the game or you do this ally and then you cancel the alliance oh god I guess we're losing 10 prestige yeah you uh, cancel the alliance and that means that you have a truce for five years like i said earlier all right so we made full course out of all the other provinces we got here so next we're going to be setting up the protect treaty edict we probably should have done this a while back i just kind of remembered about it right now so don't don't judge me okay this means we have 18 trade power right now in Antwerpen and in Bruges we have another 16 trade power significantly increasing our trade power in the um, English Channel node meaning we get six ducats right now from here with just a few provinces we're gonna need more ships though so let's go ahead and max out the amount of ships that we can have right now we can have up to 29 ships and we're gonna make sure that all 29 of those are gonna be a light ships the Dutch also have unique ships. Once we form the Netherlands, we can unlock the uh, Dutch India Man or VR Dutch India Man, which is a really great ship that acts both as a transport, as a regular light ship, and it also has some extra buffs to it. So we're going to be replacing most of our fleet with those ships eventually when the time arises, right? But for now, light ships are our bread and butter. And speaking of bread and butter, how about you guys? You guys happy with me now? Not yet. Continuing to improve relations. Hopefully, they get friendly relations with me and then I can get the alliance we did manage to sneakily hold on to that diplo relation slot with them by sending a royal marriage before they cancel the alliance with us because remember we really want to be on the good side of the emperor in this run and in general whenever you're playing in the hre having the emperor on your side and the electors is always going to be beneficial that's why i switched over my alliance and i allied the palatinat i canceled the alliance with nassau clevs also changed their relations with us to friendly in the moment that it uh, went above 50 so we can do the same thing get them out of the coalition as consequence by doing this alliance and canceling it right after we also managed to challenge the spanish fleet by having 50 percent at least of castile's naval strength so we got some uh, naval tradition as consequence now can also do the fixed garrison system we just need to have one more province with another uh, uh fort so then we get another fort defense and garrison bonus this doesn't lead to anything so it's not necessary to do it now we can just do it passively once we capture the uh, utrecht which already has a fort in it so we don't need to waste 200 ducats oh my god yes please Please, 60 relations with all of my neighbors is exactly what I needed. Also, we went to 20% crownless now, so we don't have the autonomy debuff, which was really the only debuff that I actually cared about from all of those given out by the estates. Plus, because we have 20 light ships, we can do the sea beggars, giving us light ship combat ability and blockade efficiency. Time to get our second tier government reform. We have the ability to get the unique ministerial promotions, which offers advisor cost reduction and max nobility privilege with favor gain we also have a few other good ones here like the uh, army tradition gain is pretty decent the noble curtailing noble privileges is decent at the start when tax in tax income is actually pretty valuable so we can do this first and we can change over to the ministerial promotions as we progress in the campaign whenever we don't need to care about tax anymore and we can uh, make use of the extra nobility privilege plus the advisor cost reduction of course so when we get level three level four advisors that's going to be a big deal look how quickly we're gaining this now 
we've uh, also set up the uh, spread of uh, institution advancement so essentially we already got it extremely fast so it's going to spread to the rest of the country and then we can adopt it or we can just adopt it now so we can get our technologies cheap and we can also get the four innovativeness from both of these technologies and yes my admin is absolutely dog shit because i had to quarrel with this i have a really bad admin advisor i have a really bad admin generation from my leader and i actually had like four different events that lowered my admin so yeah just better better rng right there okay that's sometimes it happens like that unfortunately let's also not forget to make flemish an accepted culture so this way we don't have the debuffs to um tax manpower and sailors that we would if they were not an accepted culture from those particular provinces anyway 145 ducats how many loans is that is that like one loan in a little bit guess so one loan in two months i guess waiting for yep that's exactly what that is all right so embracius maximus now boom and a boom so we went up to a 15 almost innovativeness as consequence now we kind of need to wait for our admin to catch up don't we <laughs> yes we do also now that we have that we can start selling it to the highest bidder essentially so let's see offer knowledge sharing castile is likely going to give us the highest amount of money for this so let's offer it to the castilian there you go castile is offering 2.52 ducats that is a serious amount of money 760 ducats as consequence with the 2.5 that we're getting from the castilians and after we paid the loan it's up to eight ducats already so unfortunately we were pretty unlucky they uh, managed to spawn faceting in Siena, the Florentines. So yeah, we were really close though. We were really, really close to it in Antwerpen. The main issue was the prestige, I think. They managed to get 50 prestige before us, which sucks PP, but it is what it is. All right, now the coalition did dissipate now, and I'm going to do something that is a little bit five head, a little bit nine head as well, a little bit 12 head. It's just essentially a lot of heads. I'm going to get alliances with all of my neighboring nations here, and then I'm going to cancel their alliances. I'm only getting these temporarily, and I did get the alliance with the Austrians too because I'll be attacking Utrecht, Friesland, Gelre and I'll be taking as much land from them as I possibly can take or I'll be vassalizing them. So by getting alliances with the other neighbors around, I get less aggressive expansion with those nations so they're not going to join any coalition against me. And I'm going to go for the weakest of the of them all which is in my case Utrecht. So let's attack Yes, Boom Shakalokodons. Take out that army, siege down that province afterwards and let's actually send a couple of units over here to make sure that um, Munster doesn't attack them and take Overstich whilst I'm attacking Utrecht. Oh, last jousting tournament. That is really, really good. Would have been nicer to have this earlier when we were at war with the Burgundians, but now it's fine as well, I guess. We also have more ships than Utrecht, so we can uh, navally blockade them, which gives us a little bit of a bonus to sieging down this province a little bit faster. And we had to navally land our units because nobody's giving us military access. Looks like Gelre is a little bit afraid of us. I'm not sure why, though. You know what? I'm going to call these guys in because I'm pretty sure they have an interest in taking Oldenburg's lands as well. They do. So maybe I can give Oldenburg to Munster, get some favors in the process. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that was just... We got saved by Munster. We literally got saved by them. If we didn't get Munster in, we probably would have lost that battle. Holy mother. After a literal trillion years, they actually took this province. So let's give it over to uh, Munster. Make them nice and plump. And also in the process, get rid of one more nation that would be unhappy with us expanding around them, obviously. That being said, we're not going to be um, annexing the provinces in Utrecht. We will be just vassalizing the provinces in Utrecht, making them our vassals means we can use them in our wars use their armies and it's less aggressive expansion so it allows us to take more provinces in the netherlands unify the netherlands as consequence a lot faster in the process can also seize crownlands apparently okay cool can do that hails to the yes broski and now let's get ready for the next war see which one of these uh dutch nations is weakest of them all and let's also not forget to improve relations with our brand new vassal we want to make them as loyal and as happy as possible should probably also start building some marketplaces to increase the amount of trade power we have in the node and getting some of those churches is also pretty significant now so we're going to build all the churches and all the provinces because we have pretty high tax development and we're going to boost that uh, church tax with some of the reforms that we're going to give out in this campaign as well hello radical reforms it triggered very late i was hoping this would trigger a lot faster but it's fine so this is the event i was talking about before radical reforms happens when you have the uh inflation reduction and the trade efficiency guy so it's gonna fire both of these advisors but you can fire them before 
for this and you get the 200 of each uh, admin and uh, diplo points and then you can uh, rehire them so technically you didn't lose nothing here okay they're still around we apparently can go for yeah sure when that means we have 17 years ahead of time technology holy mother looks like england's trying to ally me i was improving relations with the freaking french for so long <laughs> looks like i'm on the uh, side of their enemies however it do be like that sometimes now we're gonna have to root for the english to win the uh, hundred years war i don't know oh actually they gave already the province of maine never mind Ooh. hey yeah, baby. Look at that 24 innovativeness already hot diggity dong and we can do our first idea set because we're gonna be playing toll in this campaign We're gonna have to get our playing toll ideas So that means we need to get infrastructure which offers minus 10% dev cost reduction alongside a lot of other awesome uh, Ideas, but we're gonna also need aristocratic ideas that offers minus 5% Dev cost reduction and manpower and a lot of other awesome stuff here The reason we're gonna go for aristocratic first is because we're lacking Hacking on our admin, we're ahead of time with our military, and we are gaining more military than we're getting admin. Plus, we're gonna need extra admin to core all of the Netherlands and to get admin tech 7 to get the second idea set unlocked. So, by going aristocratic first, we don't need to stress about getting the mana points to fill up this idea set. And when we get the second idea set, we can go for infrastructure. By that point, we should also have most of the Netherlands under our control, so we don't need to worry as much about wasting admin points on coring anything up okay so we have the truce over with flanders so we can attack them they're only allied to nassau and they're not a part of the hre which means it's very little aggressive expansion but there's a problem burgundy has warned us which means if we attack the flemish then we will have to fight the burgundians we don't want to do that just yet instead we can attack gelre which uh doesn't border burgundy so we don't need to worry about the burgundians being called in remember that the warning only applies to nations that border actually hold on a second can i call in in this war no liege monster i was hoping i can call in castile then i could have fought the uh, burgundians as well unfortunately it do be like that sometimes let's call in monster still liege and uh berg or actually i'm only gonna call in monster okay we positioned our troops over here so we can attack gelray i'm only gonna call in monster for now not gonna cobliterate anybody else but i'll call the other two nations once i already reach the province of upper gelders otherwise liege or berg is gonna try and take that province since they also have uh, either vital or strategic interest in that particular area and I wouldn't be able to make it there first before they do I'm gonna give the objective to Utrecht to siege down upper gelders do what I tell you please oh my god they're not doing what I tell them okay let's send our mercenaries in that case can we even we're kind of blocked over here unfortunately by this fort oh we blocked by two forts we need to take the fort in Dortmund as well don't we I'm gonna sign the one in Dortmund to Munster maybe they're gonna do that because they're likely gonna want to take the province of Dortmund yep they got vital interest in there and this is also a uh, free city so this is a uh, really amazing because we don't need to fight the HRE Emperor to get rid of this really annoying HRE city, right? Oh, oh, they're taking out their army. Hell yeah, baby. No more Dortmundians. Well, no, they did retreat, so I guess we're still gonna have some Dortmundians around. Let me go help them out, siege that down. Also gonna go for ask for contribution, which lowers the building cost by 5%, and high income lowers the building cost as well by 10%. So now building stuff is significantly cheaper. Oh, what? Utrecht actually did what I wanted them to do. And yes, I did call in uh, Berg, because Berg's army was right next to the enemy army and i was like why not just kohlberg so they can wipe out the enemy army <laughs> that's just sometimes you got to work with the big brain moves boys sometimes you got to do is a big brains Poor my gore magdeburg you scumbags you actually gave condotary to brunswick i cannot believe i thought we were friends magdeburg i thought we were friend how much is that money am i gonna get 40 ducats yeah that's not bad to me i do not mind ghost lore alliance whatever bro i'm just gonna cancel all of their alliances in the hopes that somebody else is gonna attack them afterwards and i'm getting the trade which doesn't make any difference because that's actually not in the Lubeck note. It's in the Saxon one. Ech. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring my army here just in case uh, they decide to push this. Or I'm gonna keep it in Hanover. And in case they decide to push it, I'm gonna reinforce it. How far are we from getting this province? Hey! Hello, Dortmund. Would you like to be a part of a Munster? Yeah? Okay, no problem. You're now Munsteri. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? Paderborn. Wait, wait. Where's Kion? Oh my god. Did they just completely wipe out Kjoln? I think they did. Wow, I haven't seen that in a really long time. Usually Kjoln wins the engagement with Berg in most cases. 
We can do global domination, which is going to give 15 trade efficiency. I don't mind doing it early. I know some people like to wait until uh, they get more trade uh, value in the node. I got 40% and I'm going to get a little bit more once I build the flagship as well. So it's not too bad. Plus, it's going to help a lot in the early campaign to get this extra boost of money to uh, build up more buildings, right? Braunschweig down. Let's, uh, oh, I guess, too late to get the army tradition. They already wiped out their armies. Okay, let's do this peace deal. Get this guy back. Uh, okay, baby. Now we're talking. Is now we're gonna be getting our secondary vassal cure in namely juice lords of Galre. It's a little bit of a coalition, not too many nations, and we basically have two thirds. Well, not I, I'd say maybe half and a little bit more 60% of the Netherlands, I guess we have now. And I'm really close to getting my power projection since I've eclipsed Brabant. Let's get 10%, uh, 10 more power projection from insulting the Swedes. That means we got plus one of each mana point since we have above 50 power projection and get even more by uh embargoing both the Swedes and the Burgundians. You can also give out the Strong Duchies that offers two extra Diplo Relations and Liberty Desire Reduction in our subjects since we have two subjects, Gelre and Brabant. And because uh, and because we have so many extra vassals, we can increase the amount of troops that we have since our land force limit has increased too. Plus, I'm going to do this, sell some titles, see some crownlands. We are back above 20% crownlands and we can use the extra money to just build up all the churches that we need to build, build some barracks and so on as well. Once, uh, you know we're not building stuff because right now we're building in every single one of our province now when it comes to our flagship obviously you want to go for a light ship then you also want to add the trade power per ship and fleet to double effectively the amount of uh, trade power we get from our fleets that have this particular flagship in it. We're also going to go for the movement speed that also helps out with the trade. And we're also going to do the uh, privateer efficiency because sometimes we might use our ships as uh, privateers to destroy another enemy's uh, trade, let's say. Now, once that's done, we're likely going to be just selling all of these uh, cogs. Well, actually, we're going to sell these cogs right now and build more light ships in exchange since we don't plan on navally invading anybody anytime soon and the most big brain thing is to sell these ships to your vassals they still have to pay you and when you integrate your vassals you're gonna get your ships back so Technically, you kind of just, uh, you know, sold your ships. You got free money. That's literally free money right there. Hello, Charikas Van Dam the First de Reginar is in charge of our country now. And what's our ear looking like? One, three, four. Oh, no. No. No, Albert. No. Oh, my God. I cannot believe he just swam in that shark's mouth. Oh, that is an unfortunate accident. Could have happened to anyone, really. Now we're talking Margaretha, more like Rebecca, and so and so on. Wait, that was a female, right? <laughs> yeah, it's an heiress. Okay, we got you. We got you, boys. We also just got mili admin tech five, so we can get a workshop in every province. The way we're gonna do our buildings, guys, is we're gonna build churches, workshops in every single province, barracks in every single province, courthouses, obviously universities, and all the upgraded versions of these buildings in every single province. Then we're gonna build soldiers' households in grain, fish, livestock, and wine provinces, manufactories in all the other provinces, and marketplaces only in the provinces that give high amounts of uh, trade power but if we have extra slots lying around we will just build everywhere that we have an extra slot of course and uh, castles we're gonna have to redo our castles once we've unified all of the netherlands we're gonna build one say in brabant which is a woods another one in overstitch which again is a wood so we get the minus one dice roll for the attacker we're gonna delete some of these here like the den hog one is useless because it's farmlands we will keep the one maybe in utrecht actually no the one in breda is gonna be uh, essentially protecting every single one of the provinces here so we don't need to have any other castles afterwards in that area we'll need one in the south maybe in namur which is a woods maybe result it's a farmless but no other choice unfortunately here we don't have any other better protected uh, province there holy shit we just increased our trade power by eight percent from simply just attaching the flagship to our trade fleet that is mind-blowing right there okay we can also attack nations now again so the way that it works with the when you get warned it's time right so the warning that the burgundian gave us has expired as such we can attack these guys here and uh, take the province that we wanted to take a while back and we can also do our tier 3 government reform now the, some of these are actually tailored for playing toll namely centralized bureaucracy offers 50% back from centralizing a state also offers global prosperity growth and development cost modifier minus 5% so that's pretty freaking insane but you need to have less than 15 provinces which is fine because that's around the amount that we're gonna have other 
good uh, tier 3 reforms are the uh, reform progress growth plus 20% in advisors. The regional councils can be pretty decent, especially for the French, for example, because uh, some of these edicts really help out massively in the early campaign. So let's go ahead and get the centralized bureaucracy. Now, if you don't know what that is, you click over here on your states and you see centralizing state is going to give a lowered state governing cost, maintenance, and increases passive prosperity. It takes five years to do this, though, and it costs reform progress as well as admin points. So because of the uh, government reform that we did, it's going to give us back after we finish centralizing that state 25 admin points and half of the reform progress that we use to centralize it. But it's only given back after it's finished. So keep that in mind. This allows you to essentially not have to worry about governing capacity at all by just continuously centralizing again and again in your state. If I wasn't a part of the HRE, well, better yet, if Utrecht wasn't a part of the HRE, I would take uh, the province, but because they are, I'm not going to do it since uh, it's not going to be a core and I would get the uh, debuff. The emperor is going to ask me for unlawful territory. I don't want to do it as such. Okay, we got resell. Let's go over here. We still have to piece out uh, Nassau. I kind of forgot about them. And we can also do our 5% development cost reduction from the second idea in aristocratic. This is going to be super cheap as well. Look at that. We only have four nations in a potential coalition. It's only 13 because this province is not a part of the HRE. Look how massive of a difference that makes, guys. It is just mind-blowing to me. You know what? Whilst we're at it, let's go ahead and attack these guys here too. We're going to set uh, Breda as the war target and we're going to try and uh, gun for these. We're going to give Klevs over to Berg because they uh, do want to take Berg for sure. We might give the province of uh, Brabant to Liege if they want it. So uh, they don't want it. Okay, so that might be an issue because either if I vassalize them, it might be a little bit too much AE. 40 AE is quite a lot. Otherwise, if I just take these two provinces, 24 is acceptable. And if I give this province to Liege, they disappear. Nobody to be upset with me. And Liege is my ally. So I don't really care about them having that province for the time being. Operation Cleave the Clevians is here. Let's transfer over to Berg and give it over to Berg as well. Get our Diplomatus back. And yeah, gone Clevs. Yeah, real gone now. Real, real gone. Same here. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, it's unfortunate, I guess. Boom, boom. Nope, they don't want it. Now, I'm just going to take these two and I'm going to chill after for a very long time because I don't need to do nothing. I just need Friesland and a couple more provinces, so we should be fine. All right, there you go. Now, Chilius Maximus, Aber Unzi, Integratius, the Vesalicus. Hey, we got the fixed garrison system. Hell yeah. Let's also upgrade our centers of trade to level two and three and so on. I got pretty decent relations with the with the HRE Empress, so hopefully he's not gonna ask me for unlawful territory. Let's see what happens. And just check out how ridiculously powerful this nation is. We are right now getting 21 ducats as profit, predominantly from trade income. We're getting that with just 49% of the English Channel node, and that is with just a few provinces within the English Channel node. I love that. Not to mention, once we upgrade the Dutch Poldrums to level 3, we're gonna get an extra 10% goods produced for the entire country. Universal bonus. I cannot believe how strong that is. That right there is one of my favorite monuments by far, and we start with this at level 1, so slowly we'll creepily get it up to level 10 once we get more money. Remember guys, whenever you're integrating vassals, you wanna give out before you start integrating the nobility integration policy so you do not get the minus 3 diplomacy reputation after you've integrated said vassals and now we got Utrecht in there so we can disband the well actually you know what I'll keep that fort I'll disband the one in Utrecht instead we have some extra ships all of them freaking cogs okay well let's uh, sell all of these bad boys off make sure we also make these uh, full cores now and we have the entirety of the Holland state how much uh, we have in the trade note now 50% not too bad 51% actually not too bad meaning we're making how much money we're making still 20 ducats total income 35 considering that we're so small and we're making more money right now than the Austrians, that is pretty impressive. Remember to also lower your autonomy and provinces that you have from uh, integrated subjects like vassals and POs and so on, because by default, they have 60 autonomy, so you have to lower that autonomy after integrating. Also, one really good feature you should definitely use is the expand infrastructure. You can do this every 15 developments, so 15, 30, 45, 60 in your provinces, and look at the amount of bonuses it offers. It's just mind-blowing. 
going. It even lets you build more manufactories and building slots in those particular provinces. You essentially want to get this in every single province if you're playing as the Netherlands. But take note, it does mean it will cost you increased governing costs by 15 per click, so quite a lot. However, since you're very small and you have quite a little bit of governing capacity, do make sure to you use this as much as possible. For example, us using it here a little bit brought our development for this province to 25. So if we go to encourage development, it went down to 20 mana dev in a 17 development province with no development ideas unlocked yet from infrastructure. So that is just super freaking powerful right there. And I know that a lot of people don't use this, but they really should in my opinion. I really hope you guys enjoyed this run. If you did, don't forget to leave that like. And hey, until the next time, check out this awesome France run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.